My name is Tony Brenda Wilson. I'm 64 years of age. Originally, I'm from Norway. I was born in Oslo in 1956. Uh, I was the first ever colored baby to be born from a white Norwegian lady, which was my mother. And I had 40 doctors witness my birth. They'd never, ever seen a black baby being, ever been born in that country. I was the first one ever. Now, apparently so my mother thought that, that, that they were disappointed because they all dropped, faces all dropped. They thought they'd come out, say, like, more or less full. And they were very, because you come out very light when you half cast blue eyes and very light skin. And they were very shocked at the fact that they expected me to come out black and to be famous. Now, in them days, right, it was very bad. Nine you, you could not be, um, well, excuse the expression, um, um, born out of wedlock, which they call bastard, right? And don't forget, in no way there's no black people. So my mum married my dad. My mother was engaged in Norway. She married my dad over there, right? Because she would not, the, the doctor tried to make her have an abortion with me. It, it won't work. In Norwegian, you've got to go back to Norway. You've what, got. What year was that? 1956, right? Right, and so, and and her, even her fiancé came over from Norway to persuade her. I know you got married, it doesn't matter, we could annul the marriage, then come back to Norway, and we'll have other children. My mum thought, no, all the children are going to be white, and I'm going to be the only one. There's no black children in Norway. So that was very hard. So she went back to Norway. Now, my grandpa didn't want to know me, because, you know, my, you know, because... I mean, but when I was born at the table, he wouldn't look at me, and then he sort of like peeped, and I, and I, and I, and perhaps what I told, I grabbed his little finger with my little finger, and he turned around and fell in love with me, and that's where I get my name from. It's T O N E. In English, we haven't the equivalent in English. I call myself Tony T. It's pronounced Tuna. In English, we can't say it. Hello, my name is Tuna. In Norwegian, I say, yeah, yeah, it's a Tuna. Very easy. But not many people speak Swedish, Danish, or Norwegian. So that's that, that. Anyway, so my dad got out and nearly two years ago, he was back and forth to Norway. I had other siblings as well, which nearly killed my mother when next to the blah, blah, blah. Anyway, so um, some time was spent in Norway winter time in England, you know, for school and that. Now, the problem was, um, um, is, is that um, my dad would not go to Norway because he thought that everyone could stare at him for being black. There was no black people. When my mum was very young, my mum was very small, and everyone used to, stop in the, used to get stopped in the street. They'd say, oh, bear it. That's my mum's name. So they thought my mum had adopted some African children. There's no black children in the whole of Norway. And, we, they, and, my, grand, and my grandmother, for example, was working at a corner shop. And one of her friends came in there and said, I'll see. I won't speak it in Norwegian because you won't understand. I said, I'll do how to set my mark on this. I said, I'll set the father of the barn. But part of the will come and say, shoot the shop in. So he brings them and say, and my grandmother said, I know, they're my grandchildren. I felt so proud. You come rushing in, so please come and see these coloured children. They've never seen coloured children before. People used to give me money, my mother, money in the streets. You are doing such a good job raising these African children. We're very proud of you. There's so much money. And you know, that, that's what they used to think. That's how ignorant it was in the 50s. I mean, now... Now, now, her boyfriend still wanted to marry her, but she couldn't. So that's it. And when, that's how we came back to being in England. Uh, my mum is Norwegian. Now, the good, I'm allowed, the good thing about her dad's obviously Nigerian. 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 Right, and it's called Eric Wilson. Guess on that for a Nigerian name. Now, luckily, he's got a middle name called Adituji, which is Yoruba. What is it? Adituji. Right? 
I've got an African name as well. Alushla. Shola. Alushla. Never been to Nigeria and don't know anything about. I just knew that his grandfather was um, a reverend. That's about it. So, we, uh, What's his name? Eric Adituji Wilson. That's where we get the Wilson surname from. Wilson. But in, in, yeah, in 1960, they got their independence from Britain. That's where it's Eric Wilson. That's where the name comes from. Mine's Alushla Shola. Alushla Shola. That, 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 that's Alushla or Shola for short. Boys or girls' name. You know, like Francis or Leslie. Mm. You can get everything. But I, I don't use that name. That's my emergency name. I don't know about that. That's my emergency name. Yeah. Anyway, that's just my African nickname. Yeah. You know what I mean? Anyway, and um, so, so obviously we said from England, every year to go to Norway, 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 Norway. We said speak Norwegian. I've lost a lot of Norwegian now because I've not been over for 30 years. Is that another? Now went to school. Obviously went to school. Back then we used to go to school ourselves. We didn't need um, parents to take us except for the first week. We need to start. Blah blah blah. Now I went to normal school. Now when I went to secondary school, I went to Altrincham, which is in Cheshire, and same so, same. And it was an all girls. Went to Royal Secondary Modern School for girls, and that was a normal school. We didn't have mixed schools then. Right, and to me that was just a normal school. Now when I was 16 I ventured out coming to sort of like Moss Side. I've never seen so many black people in all my life. I was shocked. I was shocked. Yeah. I couldn't believe it myself. I mean, because we used to get called coconuts, you know, brown the outside, white in the middle. That used to be what they used to call us. How, was it, um, how did you feel growing up in, you're the only black, it, how did you feel about you to be, be the only black? No, it was great. I've never had a problem. Mm. The worst name in my life that I've ever been called as a, when I was about, say, 14 was Chocolate Drop. That was the worst ever name. The only in, in, you, you, ch you Chocolate Drop. I, I, I couldn't stop laughing. That was the worst name that in the school that someone could think of. When we was having an argument with this stupid girl, you, 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 chocolate drop. When I burst out laughing, that was funny. That, that's the only time I've ever come across anyone that was uh, tried to insult me. Chocolate drop. I said, yeah, no, they're great in the packet. Round trees or Cadbury's chocolate drops. Love them. Uh, you know what I mean? So I've never had any problems, you know what I mean, with the bad people. It's only when I went to my side and ventured out and it was very strange because they thought our accents were Cheshire different from we're not Jamaican so obviously you spoke different but posh accent where do you come from? So I had to learn to speak fit in Manchester so the first words I learned was that you know what I mean? Yeah! You know what I mean? Yeah! Yeah man! Them kind of things which I've maintained all the time otherwise you know I can Speak just normal things. I mean, you can tell I don't come from right. No, and all that business. That's shocking. That's it. Now, as for the drugs part that came into it, I've always worked from school. Almost into you. Yeah, I've got all the A levels, all that business. No problem with that. Did you work? Yes, and then went back to Norway, work, blah blah, uni university, blah blah blah. University. I went to uni at night time. I've been to politics, been to all that business. Anyway. Oh, blah, 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 blah. Now, I did a bit of medicine, I did a bit of uh, criminology and studying on that. Now, uh, curiosity led me into drugs. My mum and dad never swore, never drank, never swore. I, I've never even seen my mother in a pair of jeans even, ever. I mean, I've never heard my mum and dad swear, ever. I think my mum said once, bloody hell by mistake. That's it. In my whole life, she said, bloody hell. That's the only time I've ever heard my mother swear. That's the only time. That's not a big swear word, is it? And I thought, Mum, you just swore. Because back then it was great before she understood the swear word. Mum, can we go and fucking play out? Mum, can I have a nook? Can I, uh, what we're getting for fucking Christmas? She didn't. <laughs> to, to, to me, that grass is up because he understood the swear word because he's never seen it. It used to be great. He used to be able to swear to me, Mum, and she said, Mum, can we go? Oh, Mum, oh, Mum, I'm fucking starving, Mum, have you got any fucking grub? You know what I mean? Say, 
Yes, I mean, oh God. So we got grasped up. Well, you, know when you, you know when you're young and like, you think it's dead funny? That's what she's going to do. She's a big good English, but she didn't know the swear word, so, she, so we got grasped up. <laughs> when can we go and fucking play out? We have to go to fucking school. Oh. How did you get into the drugs, man? Curiously, I learned a lot about medicine and all that. I thought, how can I call myself and no, uh, understand it? If I don't try it, I'll give myself, I will, 20 years, I thought, I will never inject till I'm 25. So I waited a few years. When I was 25, so I had my first injection, I wanted to speed and all that business. What I, age did you start smoking? Cigarettes, 12. 12. Drinking at 14. No reason to. Go to school, never show the money, everything that. Good education, good family, all they did every year, this and another, no problem, no excuse, my fault. Cur curiosity <laughs> killed the cat. I gave curiosity. I wanted to know what they like. That's all it was, basically. You just wanted to try. Yeah. Knowing about it before I know what it can do to you. So I said to myself, well, if I get past, if I leave up to 30, I can't myself lucky. When it, then it was 40, not a chance. 50, not a chance. 60, what? I've gone past now. Can't believe it. People I've known from my age, they've, they've all gone. And I'm, I'm losing my fit, fit like that. What do you smoke at the I smoke crack and I smoke smack and I enjoy it. But not like where I, where I'd spend every penny as long as I've got. I've only got a limited amount of money, so I just, I have got something to show for it. I like to, like I say, draw. It's about electrics to do this, do that. And at the end of the day, there's no reason, but I do enjoy it. I do like this moment, and I really do enjoy it. You know what I'm saying? But I cannot stand greedy people that lie and steal the family and this, that. Lied to get medication, this, I, I do not like that. And I don't feel sorry for junkies. Self-inflicted. When people make an excuse saying, well, I had a bad upbringing, uh, blah, blah. That's, the, that's the worst thing they can say. People who had a bad, bad upbringing don't want their children to, to live the way that they did. So they do anything in the power for them not to turn that way. So that's the worst excuse I've ever heard anyone say. When you're an adult, no matter how you've been brought up, parents, whatever, once you reach 18, you are an adult. You make that decision yourself. Should it be good? Should it be bad? Should it be a police officer? Should it be a prison guard? Should it join the armed forces? Uh, should it be a down-out junkie? Uh, should it be an actor? Should it, should it be a doctor? Or should the choice is there? The world is at your oyster. You make that choice when you're an adult. No matter how you've been brought up, that choice is yours. Because when you've been brought up, you're only a child. You're unable to make them decisions. Like, therefore, it's only right when you're an adult, you make your own decisions. And you recollect memories from being young. I've had a brilliant upbringing, nothing wrong. I didn't even know what a social worker was to the left school. I didn't even know what a counsellor was to the left school. I didn't know what a social worker was to the left school. I didn't even know. I didn't know. I had no reason to have any, any them kind of things into bring my life. I mean, so I didn't know these things. And all my parents were looking for, they were so glad that each, five of us, that each and every one of us, we all turned out, we educated, all of us. None of us was slow or had any problems academically. We were all all right. That's what my mum and dad were very grateful for. But as for the drugs, Mum supported me, you know what I mean, did everything she could. She didn't know the difference between cannabis and heroin, it's the same thing to her. So she went to them classes where you, your children are on drugs and learnt about it, so she'd know the signs and the differences and this, that and the other, and, and helped in that way. And that's basically, they've always said, well, I've gone this far now, uh, but I don't, I'm not greedy, I don't steal. I don't, I've never shoplifted in my whole life. I've never, I've never prostituted anything like that my whole life. I'm not like that. I mean, I just do what I do. 
not there, it's not there. And I've cut down on the drink, I've had a test yesterday as we speak, my livers are normal now, and I'm very happy. Basically, I'm, I'm happy. Yes. How do you support your habit? My habit is, is supposed to be because it's very, very... Um, I do, I, like favours for people, you know what I mean? Like, um, like not many people have credit on the phone. So, by, if I use, for, use the phone, I'll go out and get... <coughs> right, that's mine. After, they don't come into the house or anything. They've got, they have to sell something. Cause, have you ever been in the phone box that costs you about two quid, three pounds in the phone box? Yeah. And, and if you have to wait somewhere, you can't drag it on, on the JCB, you know, you know what I mean? Yeah, right, I'm there now. What, what's that big telephone box doing with you? Oh, well, just in case I missed you. Imagine that, eh? <laughs> See the minute. <laughs> so we do favours for people. Yeah, favours. Oh, oh. using their phone, by using your phone. Yeah, not always, not if it's anything on top, and in illegal, such as, um, if a person can't phone somebody, well, I don't use my phone because I want to, if you can't speak to them, there's something wrong, you're not using my phone, it's only when I do it myself to earn something. That's not always the case, but that's one of the reasons. If not, I can repair things, I've got speakers that I don't need, I can repair things, mobile phones, this, that, another. And I can earn me little bits and bobs that way. Cause I don't use a great deal, you know what I mean? I just sell things that, silly things. You know what I mean? I don't. I don't go out, I don't, I've never shoplifted, I don't, I don't rob, I don't do anything. I, 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 I budget my money out. I don't get a lot, but I budget it out just enough so I can live off it. Do you think the, do you think the drug controls you? I control the drug. <laughs> All the way around. <laughs> but would you have got control? The mayor wouldn't have a penny to my name, would I? <laughs> Not even a Norwegian kroner. <laughs> so you don't depend on alcohol, on drugs? Or alcohol. No, it's the alcohol that, that is the very, very, very dangerous thing. Now, alcohol, um, for example, I said, oh, I don't want to even drink, that's it, no more. Within a week, I'll be dead. Yeah, because it's very, more dangerous than drugs, much more dangerous than drugs, ask any dots. Because I, the alcohol, like, one by one, your organs will, will start failing if you just don't stop. It's too much of a shock to your system. You know what I mean? You can't do it, and you will die. You know what I mean? No, maybe, no, perhaps you might. No ifs and buts. You're not allowed to stop. If you want to die, don't do it. You have a uh, like, you have a uh, medication prescribed if you really do want to come off it. But I'll be honest, right? I'd like to tell my doctor, I've told my dinner, I have got no intention of stopping unless uh, there's something wrong with me, meaning my life, or say I got into a relationship with somebody, uh, even at my age, ugly as I am. You know, why do they can put a picture on me, uh, on my phone to put people off when they see my picture? Ugly. I'm a good girl. I won the pra I won the top. I, w I, w I win a gold cup for being ugly. You look, go you look gorgeous, man. You look good. Yeah. Well, thank you very much. That's <laughs> nice, that, isn't it? Thank you very much. Oh, that's nice to hear that. Nice. <laughs> and I put a bit of weight on as well, look. I put this on, look. Yeah. Look. look. See, you see my... You're not planning, you're not planning to stop drinking anything. No, because it's too dangerous unless, of course, but because yesterday I've had my livers are normal and I've had plenty of damage done in the past, I mean, come on, look at my age, I'm still alive. But within the same drink, no more than 5 cents, very least, never get drunk, control it, monitor it, do not mix with drinks, blah, 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 don't ever get drunk. There's nobody that you can, I bet you won't find a person that's seen me drunk. No. I don't, I don't get drunk, I don't. I don't like people when they get drunk, I don't like it. Do you, do you drink to block the past or do you drink to enjoy it? I enjoy it. Enjoy I've got it. nothing to block. <laughs> I've got nothing to block. 
So you enjoy your lifestyle. Yeah. I know it's so much stuff, but my days now I'm thinking, well, you never know. I am very paranoid about sleeping down in the bed. The worst that I can think of is waking up dead. I don't think, well, I don't fancy that. What if I'm not changing my underwear or something? I can't have that, can I? Wow. That's the worst they can think of, waking up dead. I won't be in the mood for that. People looking at me. Oh, God, she's dead. Oh, where's the coroner? Oh, no, I don't like the idea of that. No. No, no. <laughs> so, well, I'm being very serious. You know what I mean? What age did you start drinking? 14. 14. 12 smoking. My mum and dad never drank or smoke. Or swore. All this curiosity. Yes, as I got older, I was interested in medicine and all that. I studied uh, uh, criminology. I can now look about criminology. You know, like when people um, say uh, the laws of insanity and all that, like trying to get away with murders, they say they're insane and all that. There's so many things that they slip up with. A real person that's really insane. If you say, oh, I'm crazy, I can't remember, you're not insane. You know what I'm saying? Crazy people with the same people think they're normal. There's your clues here, look, straight away. When, when someone says they're crazy, well, they know. No, they know what they're doing. The best one is when people say, oh, I black out when they have a drink and I don't know what I'm doing, getting fired, blah, blah, blah. And the other night I got in a fight, that and this happened, that happened. I thought you don't remember, I thought you black out. Liars. I hate people who lie, because I know about, about, like, about so many horrible people who lie. Horrible. Horrible, horrible. How, how much do you spend daily on drugs? I, I couldn't really say a, a daily amount, because if that was the case, it's about, it's about a month's worth of money, and we get paid before that, if, if, if that was the case, but I don't, because we're like a little farm, we share. Yeah. When one can afford the other one, next man, next man, well, next man. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. No, Gary's not included because Gary never touched yeah. anything like that. Yeah. Like me, Seth, yeah. Ryan. But Ryan gets bullied too much. I'm trying to get him to stop. You do what you do, what you yeah. And 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 that, yeah. and I know Stan like because Nicholas left Stan. She lives in Manchester now. She lives in Manchester now? Yeah, she's a bit in the spill. Mm. Been together for 18 years. Mm. That's my distress. Yeah. I'm Eddie, anyway. Um, so do you take heroin every day? Well, not every day, because I have methadone. And I use that accordingly. And that's the one thing that says to me, do you think I could afford heroin every day? Not a chance. And I wouldn't anyway. I like things to show for my money. I like things to show. I do, I, like, I really do enjoy certain things, but I don't want to wake up. Oh, where's my money going? Oh, it's all gone and sh crap, crack and smack. Not a chance. I like things to show. What would you like to do in the spare time? I do a lot of drawing, don't I? And, and I do DIY and that. And that. Yeah, right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's, that's I love just got a bike. Yes, yeah. they got a bike. That's, 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 that's I bike. Yeah. When the last time you've been out for that shopping, get your nails done, your hair done, when was the last time you've um, been on the day? In a little lifetime. <laughs> Me waste money. Do you think I'm going to hairdressers and spend any money? Are you mad? That grows that slick. Do you think I would ever spend a penny on that? Not a chance. Not a chance. Whoa. I can do my own nails. I've got, I've got, um, you can tell my bag, look, look, look. All, all my rings are real, not me, what I wear. I don't have plastic. Look. I mean, no. These are all real. This is real. Wow. I mean, mm. what junkie has, is that? What junkie has, where she watches, rightly, breastfeed, I don't know, I don't know, no. 
They actually need to be room and a woman in room. I don't know. And a woman in coop. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. The right or left, shed, run, run from bed. <laughs> <laughs> What music do you listen to? Oh, me R and B. My favourite artist, my music. What's that? Dua Lipa. I love that a bit. This is great. And I like um, Maybell. I love Clean Bandit. I love all them. I love them. I love Stormzy. I love AJ Tracy. Oh, so give me something. I love, I love them all. Me love them, me love them, me like the song when they yell around round, when they take the ground, me like the song, because you're right, loud it's about, me like the song. <laughs> Never mind, but it's round, because it's not round, it's because it's square, it's seven round side. <laughs> That's up to you to decide, one or the two, the three, the four, but you'd rather have it about that one, really rather the one that you can fold, not the one that you can drop, the one that you can fold, you prefer them tight. <laughs> Did you listen to Missouri? Yeah? Yes, yes. Eddie wanted all them, but yeah. Bugs and all that, you know what I mean? And, you know what I mean? Yeah. Oh my God, to do. Oh, oh, oh. Look. oh, I love H as well as the white guy from Austin, Masters the H. I love him as well as the white guy, Masters of the Rain, 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 the paper plane, all that. Oh, I love him, it's great. I love uh, 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 Ed Sheeran. Oh, yes. Brilliant. I love uh, Be uh, Be Becky Hill. This is brilliant, see? Mm. What a voice she's got. Brilliant, Becky Hill. I love Sia. She's got a fantastic voice. I know she's so strange, but she's got a fantastic voice. What about Stormzy? With Dave. Do you know any Stormzy songs? My God, he's Stormzy. You know what? People get the on the on the CDs and listen. I got videos, so when it comes on the telly, put, put in the video, so I watch it again, and I've got it on the video. I've got I'm, I can watch them while I waste money when you have it, when you can watch them. I want, I put I've got loads of videos, loads of videos. Great, I love that Ray as well. You know Ray that, that Stormzy introduced more or less Ray back then when she was about that that. that. Uh, uh, sort of like orangey, blondy hair sort of thing. Nah, yeah. so what do you do with your hair? Do you, you wouldn't get it done now? It's like it just grows as it is. When it gets too long, just wash it, leave it. You know what I mean? But some of them are a bit lazy, like, and it gets to that. I, 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 just, I just have to split it a bit, you know what I mean? It, it joins together too quickly. You know I mean, it's going too long. No, I've got one thing of advice. I'm 64. I'm one in a million. So don't go by me because that will never happen. Everybody I knew from my age started. None of them, they've all died. Within the last 20 years, I don't know anyone who's alive who's sort of me. This is dangerous. You should know what you're doing for a start. Number one, spice, no good, right? And even weed is okay. It's the tobacco that you mix with the weed that is the harmful thing. If you, if the, the way you could do it without, that, that is, because we, no doctor or any medical advice can prove that weed does any harm to the human body, only the tobacco. So that is one very important part. Now another thing is paranoia, psychosis. That comes along with the territory. Now you have to learn a lot about it. Now people will say, believe what your eyes see. That's not always the case. Because if you're hallucinating, hallucinating, whatever. You will see, for example, a person that is not there, but you will see that person, and you'll say to him, yeah, look at him there, what's he looking at? Someone says to him, well, you're the mouth, there's no one there. Yeah, there is, look at him. That's just an example. I've seen it happen so many times. That's called psychosis, paranoia. 
If you can fight paranoia, understand it first. You will find you can enjoy drugs on a rec recreational capacity without having to spend all your money, rob, thief, lose your house, your car, your family, your kids, whatever. You must understand paranoia plays a very big part in any drug taking. That is the downfall, right? That is very important. You must understand the medical side of the side effects. Paranoia, it does take years of learning, but even psychiatrists do not understand the word paranoia properly, exactly what it means dictionary-wise, but they've never experienced it. I have a purpose. And you know something? I couldn't get paranoid if you, if you paid me. For example, my house, I don't see people putting curtains up. And anyone can sit in my rooms, bedroom, bathroom, kitchen, living room. I don't need no putting curtains, it's just on the side. I'm not paranoid. If anyone wants to look into my house, I'm doing nothing wrong. I'm not paranoid. Whereas I've seen people shut the curtains, shut the curtains. Not necessarily where I live now. Shut the curtains, shut the curtains. Yeah, there's a police car going past. Yeah, there's stop it. I want it. Uh, the paranoid. That's a very bad side effect. That's one thing you must understand and learn for indulging. Even class B drugs, spice, and especially, um, what do you call that stuff? Weed. Gandhi weed, what they call it, pot, whatever. Which I don't smoke, it is anything which I don't like. That, it, it's horrible. It is horrible. Now, crack, for example, can do the same thing. And especially speed as well. Brings on psychosis very quickly. But like crack is not physically addictive, which is mentally addictive. Therefore, your brain overrules your body. If your brain says, I need some more crack, you will need some more. Even though you will not get ill, and you will not die, not suffer. Heroin aspirin is very different because your body cannot cope with the absence of the opiate in your body. That's why it is dangerous. And if it's sick, if you go with heroin thinking, <laughs> and you, think that you get some, and you say, oh, suck it, I'll have two bags instead of one, that will kill you. The heroin itself doesn't actually kill you. What does kill you? The fact that. You, you choke on, internally on your own vomit. Nobody knows. Now, if everyone sees your blue, lips are in blue, the usual thing, you can be saved. There is an antidote, and everybody who uses drugs should carry this antidote, which everybody does. Right, and then, there's too much to learn. In this day and age, there's no need. If you've never sucked drugs, take no notice of me, friend. Guess what? I don't smoke weed. I, I've been... Everywhere, and everybody's smoke weed. I'm the only one who doesn't. You know what? I feel better for not smoking it. I get a better buzz not smoking it. I don't like it. I don't smoke it. You don't. Uh, if everyone jumps off a cliff, would you follow them? No. Do what you want to do. Don't follow a leader. Use your brain. Study. Don't take things you don't know. Learn. I'm one of the lucky ones, one in a million. When I say one in a million, that's a minimum estimate. Please do not try if you haven't. Please say no. Thank you so much, Tony. Do you think sometimes peer pressure is all? Well? Yes. People at school, university and that, they're up all night, they start taking um, exercises and and uh, speed and all that to stay awake to study. They're fighting the fa failing the exams and all that lot. Now that brings that bring that and drilling a bit on worried stress causes a lot more death, suicidal thoughts, everything. You mustn't worry. The less you worry, the more easy it becomes. If you think, oh my God, I've got an exam tomorrow. I forgot to study. So what? You've been learning all year. Relax and do what you know. Do not panic. There is the key. I never studied. I just remember what I learnt during the year. How much you think I would spend the night when it, 
And I'd see him when I'm a teenager, reading books when I've already read them throughout the whole year in school, joking, I know what I know, end of. This was, I literally enjoyed it. Oh yeah, about your martial law, I forgot to ask you about it. How long did you do martial law for? Well, your martial law. Martial law, sir. I went, you had to be 18 to learn, right? Then, I had to wait till I was 19. No, I'm lying. I was 17. And it was 18. And I back to Norway and I remembered and I came back did it older and but you have to make decoration you're not allowed to use it yeah. how long was you practicing for every day every year. why can I still do that is it the way of the ways wow. I've not done that for years I've only just done it a couple about a month ago just Show what I could do, and then just left it. And I, and I just thought, so I wonder if you, you know, would like to see Because I told you, didn't yeah. I? But you went to see it yourself, didn't you? Mm. Then anyone could say, oh, I could do this, I could do it. But to see it. Wow. You're fascinated that way, aren't you? I'm fucking fascinated. I will teach you. I'm fascinated, I'm scared. I'm thinking, I'm, I'm scared of you, probably. You can do some serious damage. Because I've got very, I'm very, very strong internally. I can take pain. <laughs> like you never. Yeah. Wow. I've been beat up dead. Been knocked out and walk and got up and walked. Have you ever been in prison? Oh my God! Was it was second home. <laughs> and that's the right. I hate people when they boast about prison. Oh, when you're in prison, oh, you just get this and that. When in prison, is different. I remember that I arrived in style, you know what I mean, because I got shipped out. I walked to the reason where I got a two year ban from Risley. And hey, the girls look like that, carry me bag and that. I'm walking through the ground style, and there's some girls like that. I say, Whoa, get out the girl, this gorgeous raster. So, so I flip me out like that. And, so, and, I get, and then I sort of walk like that, that way. Flicking me out, like, it looks like that on purpose, you know what I mean? Whoa, isn't he gorgeous? About, about an hour later, I've got about. Ten letters under me, me door, you know, under, under the door, you know what I mean, where I was staying, you know what I mean, and they got, with all these poems, oh, 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 oh we we'll meet you this time. I, had about, I, I got about six birds in one night, I'd only been there an hour. <laughs> terrible, terrible. Thank you very much for watching Tony's story, we're now going to talk a little bit about it, and please don't forget to hit subscribe if you've enjoyed it. So, Tony. What about Tony? I like her. <laughs> I love Tony. I love her. So if we start from the beginning, she was the first ever black baby in Norway, apparently. What year was that? How old is Tony? 60. She's 65, I think. Do you think she was the first black baby? My math is not that good. I can't work out what year that would have been. Well... Well, probably she, probably she was. I imagine, yeah. Or one of very few. Yeah, I think one of very few, one of the first one. Mm. I don't think she would, yeah. Probably she was the first one in a town, in an area. Do you think that's a lot to handle, or...? That's a lot. Do you think? Yeah. Can you imagine you being the... I know, but she said she didn't experience like, any racism until she moved to this country. Mm. So I just wondered if that was still a lot to handle, if you, like, she was treated the same as everyone else. She never... She was never discriminated against because of it. Yeah. So does that still make it a lot to handle? Mm, but she, felt, she definitely felt different. Yeah. Even just to feel different. But she had siblings, didn't she? Yeah. But even the fact that when she was a kid, walking walking on the road, people would stop her mm. just to play with her hair, touching her, you know. See, I, I think that is racism still. I don't think that's racism. Do you not? You wouldn't go touch some... Like, no one would come touch my hair. 
Well, how do you know? Maybe you don't. No one ever has. <laughs> I I don't think that's racist. I think, personally, some some people they never seen it before. Some people they just amazed like that hair looked beautiful, you know. It depends. I don't know. Yeah. I'd feel funny about it if that was my kid. Yeah. I wouldn't want random people touching her hair. So you tell me if it's a nice, sweet old lady. Yeah. Very sweet. You know me. You know <laughs> no, no, say, it's a question. You, you know I'm not going to say anything, but that doesn't mean I'm not comfortable with it. <laughs> no, but would you, let her, would you let her touch your daughter's hair? If she asked me. Yeah, she's like, oh, she's so pretty. Look at her hair. Can I touch it? Yeah. No. Why does she need to touch it? But she never seen it before. I don't care. I've never seen a tiger. I don't mean I'm going to go touch one. <laughs> but if you've seen it, you can ask the keeper, can I, can I touch? OK, maybe a tiger was a bad comparison. Very bad. <laughs> I don't know. I still feel a bit funny no. about that. Uh, yeah, let's disagree and agree. As usual. Agree to disagree. Yes. But I'm right, you're wrong. Okay. Um, see, this is... I was going to say, this is where Tony's a bit different for everyone else, but I think Ryan was a similar... As in, she tried drugs for the first time, just to understand them. Curiosity and, killed a cat. Mm-hmm. Now, remember, Ryan was similar, wasn't he? Yeah. I just... She wanted to experience the bio, you know. She was working, I think. Do you think you ever can't really talk about something until you've experienced it then? No. You don't need to talk about something if you experience it. You can, you can be a witness of it. You can see people, you know. If you was a drug addict, you're my friend, I can see you. So I see what the drug do to you, so... You don't need to experience you, it. I don't need to yeah. experience it. I can see what the drug's doing to you. You know, I'm witnessing it. So you don't have to try to... Try it. Yeah. No, I get you. But some people want to feel the full effect. That's what happened to Tony. She's done well still, though. As in, to get to the age she is, and, like, she's still going. She's still well. Yeah. Do you think there's anything that can be done about that? Like about people that try them out of curiosity? Well, the best message is just don't try it. Mm. But when you tell someone not to try it... Makes it more tempting. Yeah. It's like when you, someone says, don't look that way. No, <laughs> just like you, if I tell you, don't look that way. That's straight what you that way. <laughs> <laughs> straight, straight, straight. So she, this bit scares me, she was smoking at 12. A cigarette? Yeah. That's too young. But do you think almost, like, she says herself, like, her parents never drank, like, never swore, never did anything, mm. like, she never saw a mum even in jeans. Yeah. Do you think sometimes that makes kids go the other way? I don't think so. Do you not? So it's not about home then, it's not about what's happening at home. It's not about that. Because Tony's coming from a good family. Mm-hmm, she said herself, yeah. Nothing's wrong with her family, nothing's wrong at home, everything was okay. But then she's not trying drugs to block. Like a lot of the people that we've spoken to and interviewed and that, yeah. are using drugs to block out stuff. Yeah. She wasn't. She wasn't, no. So maybe. I don't know what I'm trying to say. Like maybe there needs to be like a more rounded approach to addiction, like a more varied approach, because not everyone starts for the same reason. Everyone. That. Personally, I think everyone got their own problem. Everyone got their own reason. 
Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Everyone's different. Everyone's different. Everyone cope with their problem differently. But at the moment, do you think there's not like very much like a like a one way to tackle it? No, that's how they do it at the moment. Like methadone or rehab. Method, yeah. Do you not think that needs to be another way? They need, well, I think, do you not think they need to be more like individually tailored to the person? Trying. No, I think it's going to be too much work. It's impossible. Do you know how many people are addicted? It's impossible. Yeah. I know. I know. But with Tony, she's happy with her life. She's not planning to stop smoking. Or drinking. Or drinking. She can't stop drinking. She she will die. Mm. But can you blame her? Like she's got, she's outlived all her friends. Like, what is the point in stopping now? Like she's got no reason to stop. No, of course she's got a reason to stop. What? She's got no fat. Like, it's not too she's late. She's not got kids to stop for. It's not too late. No, but do you not think the way she views it is? I've got this far doing it. Yeah. What's the point in stopping, like, like it's not killed her? Yeah. But she knows she can die from it. But she does seem fairly sensible with it. Yeah. As in she doesn't go overboard. Can you really be sensible about it, taking drugs? No. Being addicted, so you, that's, I don't think you can be... <laughs> so she started drinking at 15. Yeah. And then first injecting drugs at 25. 25. Which means she's been doing it for 40 years. 40 years. That's crazy. She'd been using drugs before I was born. <laughs> before you were even yeah. an idea to be born. Yeah. Wow. That's crazy. That's mad. And her mum blessed her. I thought that was so sweet. And mum went to like classes to learn how to support her and that. Like her family's never turned their back on her or anything. Mm. That's what family's there for. I know, but I feel like her mum went the extra mile. Yeah. But there's a limit to that. There just has much the family can do for you. If you don't want to do nothing for yourself. Which Tony doesn't. She doesn't. So it's pointless for the family to try to help. Because in her head, she controls the drug. Yeah. But I don't think that's true when people say that. I think if you're using, the drug controls you. <sighs> the only time I would say that that's not true is the people that go, like, sniff on weekends and stuff and, yeah. like, literally limit it to when they're out partying. Mm. Then but, I think they are in control. But I think if you're if you get to the point where you're using every day, you're not in control no more. Are they really in control? People that use over the weekend. Yeah. No. More yeah. Because when the drug is there or the drinks there, they won't stop until it's finish. I guess. So they're not in control. But they are vaguely in control because then they don't get off and take it on like a Monday morning. Mm. But the worry thing about it, it might lead... 100%. Because they think, I've got this, I can control this. Yeah. What's the difference to, from doing this to doing a crack pipe on a weekend? Yeah. And then we both know that that never... No. Never goes to just a weekend. No. No. What do you think? I think Tony will just carry on. I think she won't stop. She won't stop smoking or drinking. She just won't really enjoy her life. Hopefully she can like keep it in check and just continue being happy because she's happy at the moment. She is happy, yeah. She's happy. 
so she made me laugh when she was like, she doesn't like to sleep lying down. Because then she thinks she's going to wake up dead. <laughs> I don't know what difference, like, sleeping sitting up makes. <laughs> but she doesn't like to lie down. I think she's suffering from some type of mental health. Do you think she realises that? No. Hmm. She's happy with her lifestyle. I think as long as people are happy. The good thing about her, she's not blaming no one. No. And you know what? She manages her money. She doesn't beg, she doesn't steal. Like, she's not doing anyone any harm by doing what she's doing. Well, she's harming herself. Well, yeah. Yeah. But that I mean, like, she's not harming anyone else, so if she's happy... Mm. Don't know. Self-destruction. It would be a lot for her to change now. A lot. Like, 40 years of smoking and injecting and drinking. To drink, she can't stop drinking. She'll die. Can you not, like, wean yourself down, then? You reduce it. Gradually? Yeah. You so re- you can stop eventually? You can stop, but it's a long process. But you have to drink daily. You have to drink every day. Mm. Yeah. Can you imagine you've been drinking for the past 20, 30 years? Your body got used to it. So the day that you don't drink, you start shaking. You know, you can't control it. You can't control yeah. the shake. So you need the drink. That's crazy. Or your body's going to shut down. I think, like, alcohol and cigarettes should be illegal. Alcohol's worse. Mm-hmm. Personally, I think alcohol's worse than cannabis. That's my opinion. Alcohol. alcohol. Do you think that's because a lot of people drink, like, probably more people drink than smoke? So in proportion, like, if you did the same amounts, would it yeah. still be worse? But, you know, both... All right, but I think there's people that abuse it. Drink? Yeah. 100%. People that abuse it. It's like the like cannabis. And cannabis doesn't tend to turn people violent, whereas drink seems to turn a lot of people violent. Oh, yeah. Drink driving? Yep. Yeah. But then I don't think you could make drink illegal, so I don't know what you'd do to make it stricter. <laughs> you can't have too much money in it. Can you imagine? Yeah. Not many people would want to go out sober, would they? No. It's no fun. No. I think that's... That's everything. Thank you very much for watching and we'll see you again soon. No. What? uh, Subscribe button. I said that at the beginning. Yeah, you can say at the end. Thank you. And thank you for the people that have been subscribe to um, my okay. thank you very much for watching and we'll see you again soon please don't forget to subscribe if you've enjoyed it and thank you very much to everyone who has subscribed